Alright guys, it is another gray, rainy, miserable day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a gloomy Thursday afternoon in the collapse. That would be, I think we're up to Thursday, October 13th, 2022 or somewhere around there. So I have been off enjoying it while I still can, uh, up there enjoying these absolutely glorious leaf show, this glorious leaf show here. Uh, to get away from the Doomosphere for a while, but the little dog and I are back at Bugs Inajar Farm. Before we head off to the laundromat from hell, uh, we're going to bring you today's Chronicle of the Collapse and, you know, after three days off of the mainstream media, went back over there and started uh, thumbing around the mainstream media. And interestingly enough, in the mainstream media, there were a couple of articles from oilprice.com. And I, and I thought that uh, I have not checked out oilprice.com to see how the, you know, the people getting out there and making millions, if not billions of dollars uh, off the collapse of a planet. This would be fossil fuel investors, how they're reading what's going on on the planet. And uh, as I've said before, many times I find oilprice.com to be the most refreshingly honest uh, the most refreshingly honest news outlet out there chronicling the collapse of a planet. So, got a bunch here. I'm not going to get very deep into these. This is just a roundup of what is on the minds of people wanting to cash in on the collapse of a planet. <clears throat> We're going to start in the United Kingdom over there on Zombie Island. All right, these are stories over the past week, so you've probably already heard this one. UK launches massive oil and gas licensing round. The UK launched its first oil and gas licensing round since 2019 on Friday, aiming to award more than 100 licenses to ramp up domestic oil and gas production and reduce dependence on foreign sources of fossil fuels. Yes. The North Sea Transition North Sea Transition Authority, which regulates the licenses, said that it is, quote, inviting applications to explore and potentially develop 898 blocks in the North Sea, which may lead to over 100 new licenses being awarded. Yes, according to the UK government, Britain's energy security will be significantly boosted with the launch of the licensing round. Yep, yep, yep. The licensing is part of the new UK government's efforts to increase domestic oil and gas production, which also included the government formally lifting the moratorium on shale gas extraction in England. Yep. Um, Authorities will be looking at operators starting production after license awards as quickly as possible. There you go. Um, one of these planet eaters. Ensuring our energy independence means exploiting the full potential of our North Sea assets to boost domestic production. 
he thinks uh, uh, environmental campaigners criticized the new licensing round. Philip Evans of Greenpeace UK, quote, this government's energy policy benefits fossil fuel companies and no one else. New oil and gas licenses will not lower energy bills for struggling families this winter or, inner, or any winter soon, nor provide energy security in the medium term. Evan said, okay, I'll, let's go over from the UK to Norway. Let's see how Norway is cutting its, you know, meeting its climate pledges, I guess in the same way that uh, the UK is. Norway to boost oil and gas production as it expects record 2023 revenues. Hmm. Western Europe's biggest oil and gas producer, Norway, expects its oil and gas liquids production to rise by 15% next year. Hmm. With these new oil fields coming online, uh, natural gas production in Norway is <clears throat> expected to rise by 8% this year over last year and uh, then 15% next year. Yep, yep. Revenues from petroleum activities are expected at $132 billion, a record high profit in 2023 compared to an expected $113 billion this year and nearly five times higher than last year's revenues from oil and gas according to Norway's government's budget draft. Yep, yep, yep. The high expected income from petroleum activities will mostly reflect expected high oil prices and especially gas prices. Do you think so? Um, Earlier this year, Norway approved applications from operators to boost productions from several operating gas fields uh, in a scramble for gas supply ahead of the winter. Um, the new oil and gas development projects will help Norway maintain a high level of oil and gas production until 2030. Hmm, said uh, Norway's Minister of Petroleum and, in and Energy. So we're now going to go to Israel and Lebanon. How are Israel and Lebanon honoring their climate commitments <clears throat> to reduce their carbon footprint on the planet? Israel and Lebanon reach historic agreement that unlocks more oil and gas reserves. Israel and Lebanon have reached a historic agreement to settle their long-running dispute over their maritime border, an agreement that could pave the way to more oil and gas exploration in eastern Mediterranean seawaters where major discoveries have been made in recent, recent years. Isn't that sweet how new oil and gas drilling uh, is getting Israel and uh, Lebanon to patch up their little tiff. Oh, one more before we come over to our own country. 
Let's go over to Kazakhstan. Huge Kazakh oil field set to resume production by the end of this month. Kazakhstan's massive oil field. I love the uh, I love the name of their oil field, Kashagon. Yeah, I bet Kashagon will resume production at a level of 400 thousand barrels per day by the end of this month. Kazakhstan's energy minister uh, said in Moscow, uh, I guess it's been shut down due, some, due to some, quote, nuances with the equipment. The offshore oil field, Kashagon, is one of the world's biggest oil fields in terms of capacity to pump crude oil. Yep, yep, yep. And then of course that's all going um, into this big ass pipeline. But let's look at a couple of stories from our own country. How is the good old United States? How are we uh, honoring our climate commitments? Let's see, why don't we start here. More U.S. oil heads to Asia as French strikes slash European demand. That's a whole nother uh, story what's going on over there in France. I don't have time to, to get to everything. So much doom, so little time. More U.S. crude oil is going to Asia as close to two-thirds of France's refining capacity remains paralyzed by industrial action. Uh, there you go. Uh, Asian refiners have bought at least 12 million barrels of U.S. pumped crude oil in the last two weeks. So the increased Asian buying came predominantly from refineries in South Korea. And a little bit, I guess, then they sold the oil to... Oh, okay. I see. Uh, to South Korea. I don't know if they sold it to China. Who knows? Um, see, Exxon has diverted a cargo ship of U.S. light crude uh, to the U.K. Anyway, so we just keep selling uh, our own oil. I guess that's more of a story on how we are gaining energy independence, you know, by selling more and more oil on the foreign market. This is one good way to achieve energy independence. Sell all your oil and gas to other countries. Okay. What is Jamie Dimon? What is on Jamie Dimon's? If you're not aware of who Jamie Dimon is, J.P. Morgan's CEO urges U.S. oil and gas drillers to raise production. Jamie Dimon, the, chief, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, called on the U.S. oil industry to boost crude production to make up for OPEC cuts that could cause a severe shortage in the global oil market. And so there's all this talk about OPEC, you know, cutting uh, their production by 2 million barrels, although in yet another story, it explains it's not 2 million, it's really just 1 million. 
uh, if you really uh, analyze it. It's, so it's one million barrels off that one oil field in Kazakhstan is replacing 400,000 barrels. This, uh, the, 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 this stuff about uh, OPEC reducing its output is a cover story for everybody from your local gas station to the, uh, you know, to the non-OPEC uh, uh, oil drilling countries to raise their prices, okay? Uh, whatever cuts that OPEC made will be more than compensated for. But as I say, I don't have time to, uh, I mean, oilprice.com, I'm serious, guys. If you want to understand energy markets uh, and, and how they work, and especially if you want to learn how to make a bunch of money off the collapse of a planet, oilprice.com. You can learn a lot more, you know, by listening in to your enemies a lot of the times than your friends. But anyway, uh, what is... Okay, I love, uh, so this is how Jamie Dimon is reading the tea leaves, <clears throat> quote, In my view, America should have been pumping more oil and gas and should have been pumping more oil and gas, and that should have been supported. America needs to play a real leadership role. Yes, America is the swing producer, not Saudi Arabia. We should have gotten that right starting in March. Yes, uh, Diamond also noted that the oil and gas supply problem is a long-term one and it is interfering with global energy security and even the energy transition by extending dependence on coal. Yes. Um, later on in this article, uh, drillers are not leaving a lot of wells uncompleted, but are completing them and beginning production. The total of completed wells for August, which I guess is the latest figure. They don't have the September figure. So as of the end of August, there were 969 here in our own country, up from a low of 253 in June of 2020, you know, at the height of the corona panic. So, uh, since the height of the corona panic, we have rebounded from 253 to 969 in our own country. Despite these encouraging signs suggesting production growth, the industry remains guarded. Uh, many executives in oil and gas are bracing up for a recession. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to talk about that uh, in a minute. Okay, that was J.P. Morgan. So what is BlackRock uh, up to? Uh, we've heard from uh, one planet eater. Let's hear from the next one. BlackRock is ready to invest in U.S. energy pipelines. The world's biggest asset manager, BlackRock, is prepared to invest in energy pipelines in the United States as soon as as such product projects get the green light from the government. Uh, BlackRock's chief executive, Larry Fink, I love that name, Larry Fink, said yesterday, I, I am totally shocked, and matter of fact, I refuse to believe that BlackRock 
is is, is not already heavily invested in, in pipelines all over this country and all over this planet. What do you mean ready? To, you mean ready to invest uh, millions more? As uh, I guess, uh, think, think the top executive at BlackRock, which has faced criticism from both environmental campaigners for still investing in conventional energy and facing criticism from Republican-led U.S. states for what they see as a boycott of the U.S. energy industry, defended the asset manager's investment choices at a conference in Washington uh, yesterday. Quote, I am now being attacked equally by the left and the right, so I am doing something right. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, good for you, Larry Fink, being attacked by the left and right. I, I never knew I had anything in common with Larry Fink. Larry Fink is, uh, has the same problem that a lot of doomers have, uh, being attacked by the left and right. I think any doomer, uh, any doomer worth his or her salt can uh, sympathize with Larry Fink, but if you are being attacked by the lefties and uh, the right, you are doing something right. And the more you do right, the more you will be attacked by everybody on the planet who does not want to hear any of this. Okay, so in the pipeline business, BlackRock is invested in energy infrastructure in Texas and the Middle East. So I guess Larry Fink is not aware that Texas is part of the United States, probably just wishful thinking. But anyway, guys, I think we get it uh, where countries, then there was another story from Alberta, Canada, uh, you know, about how they're, you know, ratcheting up their uh, fossil fuel production. I didn't even get into all of the stuff about coal because I just did that rant, uh, how, you know, the consumption of coal uh, I am predicting, and, and anybody with a brain is predicting, that more coal will be burned on planet Earth in the year 2023 than any year in history. Not even getting into the coal. Uh, this, is, this is, you know, mainly looking at oil and, you know, oil and gas. I think we get it. Uh where this world is going with weaning itself on fossil fuels and honoring its climate commitments. All right, but before we bail out, let's touch on four more stories. You can draw your own dots between these four stories and those last seven or eight I just went over. So, what is on the mind of Vladimir Putin? Uh, when was it? I think in the one rant that I did about this Nord Stream uh, sabotage, you know, this gas pipe sabotage, uh, I, I was pointing out as someone with e even half of a brain understands that after what happened at Nord Stream, uh, it, it is clear to anybody that this is not the last one of these, and every single bit of, of oil pipelines, gas pipelines, uh, coal-fired power plants, you know, power plants, nuclear power plants, let's don't forget the nuke plants, 
there is no energy infrastructure project on planet Earth that is going to be safe from this. So I guess Vladimir Putin is a listener of Collapse Chronicles. Wow. Putin says all energy infrastructure is under threat following the pipeline explosion. Yes. Russian President Vladimir Putin said, on, said yesterday that all energy infrastructure throughout the whole world is under threat following the Nord Stream mystery explosions. Yes, Putin referred to the explosions um, as an act of terror that sets a dangerous precedent. Quote, it shows that any critically important object of transport, energy, or utilities infrastructure is under threat no matter where it is or who it belongs to. Do you think so? Okay, and guys, you might have noticed that I don't talk a lot about that little kerfuffle over there in Ukraine because the propaganda on all sides is so deafening. Uh, that is just a, that it is a propaganda war more than any other war. You know, of course, the, U, the, uh, the U.S. mainstream media is, is on one side of the propaganda war and, the, you know, obviously, uh, and, and there is no way that you are going to arrive at, at any sort of truth. That what's going on over there if, if you listen to the uh, propaganda coming out of either side. It is all horseshit. Well, it's not all horseshit. That's the thing about propaganda. A little bit of it is true. And then they use that little kernel of truth to blow it up. And it, But anyway, so we're going to listen to oilprice.com this is actually from Zero Hedge checking in with a Czech general who says NATO and Russia have never been closer to armed conflict. Russia and NATO have never been so close to actual direct conflict, conventional or nuclear, than they are now said the head of the general staff of the Czech army, Karel Reka. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Czechia is a member of NATO. Uh, he described the situation as serious and that the threat of an outright conflict between the two powers is now dire. There you go. Uh, Rekka said he believes it is now impossible for a quick end to the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Quote, anything can happen, but I don't see it. Now we're talking about how bad the solution will be going forward. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, according to him, the conflict also has no good solution. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Okay, two more. You know, we were talking about those OPEC cuts, whether or not they're BS. 
uh, has the OPEC cut made a global recession inevitable? The OPEC group's decision to cut oil supply as of November increases energy security risks worldwide and could lead to higher oil prices that could be the tipping point for a global recession, the International Energy Agency said on Thursday, describing the OPET production cut as one of the multiplying disruptive market forces. Uh, and then they go on to explain that this two million barrels per day is a bunch of BS. It's actually 1.1 million uh, barrels per day. But, but nevertheless, whatever the true number is, the OPEC cut will curtail global oil supply and could send oil prices higher, which I think is what is the is is the purpose of it? Uh, all right, quoting the IEA, what is on their mind? <clears throat> Disruptive market forces are multiplying as the world struggles to navigate the worst global energy crisis in history. Yep, yep, yep. Um, the OPEC bloc's plan to sharply curtail oil supplies to the market has derailed the growth trajectory of oil supply. I, I guess they, de they didn't read these first few articles. To derail the growth trajectory of oil supply through the remainder of this year and next, with the resulting higher price levels exacerbating market volatility and heightening energy security concerns with unrelenting inflationary pressures and interest rate hikes taking their toll, higher oil prices may prove the tipping point for a global economy already on the brink of recession. Close quote. But let's just do, I, I could go on with this uh, as long as we're talking about recessions and inflation and all the rest of this. Oil prices crumble as core U.S. inflation hits 40 year high. Oil prices fell on Thursday morning, meaning this morning, following new CPI data that showed core inflation in the U.S. had risen to its highest level in four decades. W West Texas uh, intermediate crude prices fell over one and a half percent to eighty-five dollars and ninety cents. Uh, Brent crude fell to 91.38 on the news, which showed CPI. Uh, you know, you're supposed to know what CPI means. I am having a senior moment. Uh, all of this alphabet soup. Uh, anyway, CPI, I guess that's core inflation. Uh, anyway, but showed CPI came in higher than anticipated, renewing fears that the Federal Reserve could aggressively raise interest rates next month. That interest rate hike could further stymie economic growth, easing the demand for crude oil. Okay, so here we go. If you're trying to figure all of this stuff out and you don't remember your uh, introduction to economics, core inflation, all right, core inflation is the measure of price increases excluding 
food and energy costs rose 6.6 percent over the last year, a level not seen since 1982. The uh, Labor Department said this morning total inflation, which includes food and energy costs, rose 8.2 uh, in September from September of last year. There you go. And good Lord, guys, uh, I could go on and on. Uh, there, uh, you know, I didn't even get around to uh, the world's longest offshore gas pipeline could get the green light next year. So we got Nord Stream this year and the world's longest offshore gas pipeline waiting for the green light. Gee, who would suspect uh, that China, that China is reselling U.S. liquid natural gas to Europe for big profits. Uh, do you think so? So we sell it to China and they just uh, turn the boat right around to Europe and sell it for a lot more money than they bought it for. Okay, here we go. Gasoline prices could return to five dollars per gallon. Here is the unintended consequences of the EU energy emergency plan. And do not forget, I should have made this one part of my U.S. roundup. This is an opinion piece. Failing to invest in oil and gas would be the road to hell for America. We shall find out, but there's no danger of us failing to invest in oil and gas in this country and every other country on the planet. But anyway, uh, I got to wrap this up. And uh, little dog and I, we need to head to the laundromat from hell. Looks like this should be the last sheet washing for the Airbnb this year, where for the last time in 2022, we're going to go wash a bunch of sheets as we uh, wind down the Airbnb at Bugs in a Jar Farm on November 15th and figure out what to do for the next six months. Get out there to the laundromat while you still can. Bye, guys.